afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining today. I'm Barbara Coffey, Director of Economic Initiatives for the City of Tucson. This is our April edition of our monthly webinar series for small business, Connecting for Success. Today, we'll hear from key resource partners sharing programs to help you find talent to grow and sustain your business. We'll take your questions as we go, so feel free to enter those in the chat box or the Q&A. We'll get to as many of those as possible in our time together, and we'll keep all participants muted since we do have a large number of attendees. We will also record this session and make it available for everyone. Usually they're up by tomorrow, and you can find all the links to previous webinars at www.connecttucson.com. I haven't said the WWs in a while. I usually drop that. So here we go. Well, let's get started. I have a great panel today. I'll first introduce our guests from Pima County Community and Workforce Development Department. Rhonda Pina, a second generation Tucsonan, serves as the department's program manager for business services. Rhonda has a 29 year banking career under her belt. Having worked with Wells Fargo Bank as a senior business relationship manager in commercial banking and as a branch manager for retail banking locations. Prior to Wells Fargo, she worked for Bank of America. Rhonda holds a Bachelor of Science in Business Management, Certificate in Human Resources Management, and an Arizona Department of Education Certificate Substitute for Pre-K through 12. Rhonda has served on a number of professional and community organizations, including Council Member, Town of Oro Valley, Council Liaison, Oro Valley Water Utility Commission, Commissioner, Pima County Employee Merit System Commission, and Law Enforcement Council member Pima Animal Care Center Advisory Committee and Board of Director Amphi Foundation. She currently serves on the board of Commerce Bank of Arizona and is a member of the Tucson Airport Authority. You're very busy, Rhonda. I just have to say that. Dominica Dominguez has 25 years in community social services, 15 of those working with workforce development community services. She is currently part of the Pima County One Stops Business Services team, helping employers with their workforce challenges. Dominica has an associate's degree in general studies from Pima Community College. And then we'll hear from Keisha McCabe, Director of Human Resources for Sargent Aerospace, who can share some of her recent experience working with Pima County One Stop and our partners here on the webinar today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Rhonda to get us started. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Yes. So we'll bring up, we have a PowerPoint presentation and we'll start with that. Great. And you should have the ability to share your screen. I will also encourage everyone, if you'd like to uh, use the there chat to introduce yourself, that'd be great. And there we have it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so today um, we'll be presenting on the Pima County One Stop, which is where our community workforce development business services, uh, we reside in that building, which you'll see down at the right, or excuse me, the left bottom side corner at the Kino Service Center, which includes our Kino Veterans Workforce Center. Next slide, okay. So the Community and Workforce Development, also known as our CWD department, it connects individuals, families, neighborhoods, businesses, and community-based organizations to a network of resources and services essential for learning, working, living, and thriving in Pima County. The CWD team serves with heart, urgency, and in partnership with our community. Help begins with the one stop. And I would just like to say thank you to Barbara and her group. Uh, as a partner within the Pima County community, we work very closely with our partners. And so we continue to uh, be very appreciative of this opportunity to present today and to continue to work with the city of Tucson and also our other partner who will be presenting today, uh, the Michael Guyman from the Tucson Chamber. So thank you to both of you with the opportunity to present. So business services, what we do to support employers, there's, there's several things that we do. Uh, the first thing we do is we project future skills needs. And so we have the ability to collaborate to anticipate and prepare for workforce, for workforce trainings and on the job training needs. Uh, one of the other things that we do is we identify high demand industries. Now, while we do have the ability to identify those industries, we do that 
because we work with what's called the Workforce Investment Board, one of the, the things that we found and, and actually we're talking with Barbara and her team is while we do have the high demand industries, what we have found post COVID is we have other industries that uh, also uh, have employers that have job seekers uh, that are, you could kind of say they're in high demand. Um, they're just not identified as those high demand industries. And so hopefully we'll be working together you know, with the city of Tucson and the chamber and other partners to look into those particular industries as well for job seekers and for employers. Uh, the other thing that we do is recruitment and job matching. So we match job seekers to employers. Uh, we do this through advertising, job fairs, and hiring events. Uh, the hiring events we can either do here on site or we can actually do at other sites as well. Uh, the one thing that we do is a mass recruitment uh, where we share job leads with over 12,000 job seekers, which will also match our employers with job seekers. Uh, the other item that we do uh, to support employers is we provide an on-the-job training program. And essentially what that is, is employers who uh, employers can waive experience requirements and commit to hiring and train one-stop participants. The value of doing this is that they get the opportunity to work with participants um, that are eligible, and then they can get up to 50% of the wages of that participant reimbursed. And the beauty of that is, is that not only are they getting the wages reimbursed, but they're also able to have time to see if it's gonna be a good fit for the job seeker and the employer. And then lastly, which is a good thing that we haven't had to utilize this service is we have what's called the rapid response. And rapid response is essentially put in place when layoffs uh, come into effect. And we don't really have that issue now, which is a good thing, but we do have the rapid response program and we help mitigate layoffs in Pima County. And the way that we do that is we have a process that affects connected workers to one-stop services, uh, which also includes uh, the Department of Economic Security. The reason why this is so important is because obviously when, when it comes to layoffs, there's unemployment resource needs. And so we have the ability to connect those individuals uh, right away because obviously there's a sense of urgency when, when an, an uh, individual gets laid off from work. So what we've done with our employer services is we, we keep track of what we do and what we service here. So the Community and Workforce Development Business Services Division, uh, we seek to address business needs and obviously coordinate through meaningful trust building engagement. So we have, I guess what you call a book of business with employers here within Pima County. And so for the fiscal year 630-21, we served over 822 employers we assisted 55 companies and provided resources to over 4,281 employees affected by layoffs or plant closings. Uh, we also reimbursed more than 72,000 to employers as part of the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, also known as WIOA for on-the-job training, where 100% of employers hired their participant full-time. Now, it's important to note that this time period, if, if you'll remember back, this was a time when COVID was in full force. So our, our year would have gone 630, 21, excuse me, 20 to 2021. 20, and so when there were layoffs or people looking for jobs, we were busy with working with programs, you know, the payment protection program, the, uh, better, the better business plan that the county had put out uh, to help businesses. So those numbers uh, seem very high and, and they were because there was a lot of infect, a lot of affected employees. So how do we do job connections? The job connections that we do, we do in-person hiring events. We also do on-site employer recruitment activities. We do resource navigator activities, which is our way of doing holistic customer service approach to connecting job seekers and employers. We also do job postings at no charge, which I mentioned earlier in the, the previous slide. 
there's an outreach to over 12,000 job seekers. And so when we send that information out, there is no charge for the employers or the employees, uh, or excuse me, the job seekers that are looking for jobs. The other way that we can do job connection or we do it through social media and community outreach. We have a wealth of information that we can disperse and have the resources at our hands here at Pima County uh, in order to get that uh, information out to the community. And so um, it's important to note that on the, the hiring event, events that we do, we can do them here or we can do them at a place of business or we can do them off site, which we have actually done. You know, here recently, we've done job fairs with the city of Tucson um, as well as other community partners. So uh, that's one of the things that we'll continue to do because I think as we see more people maybe wanna go out and get you know, employment and we'll work with the employers, those things are gonna become even greater uh, become of even greater importance and we'll be working with our community partners uh, to help our employers. So our goal as well as our community partners um, that are here today, you know, are obviously to have a career ready workforce. Um, the way that we do that is we set career goal planning uh, with case managers. So our participants can come in through the one stop. They can be aligned with case managers and those case managers will help them provide the right uh, training, the right career uh, path, so that we look to have a sustainable wage for these individuals looking to have long-term employment. And, in, and then you know, the value is to the employer as well because they're gonna retain these employees. And um, we do have pre-employment seminars for improving in interviewing skills, resume writing, and basic uh, computer skills. And we can do those here at the One Stop with those classes. We also offer supportive services and, you know, a lot of times we may find with this workforce that there's barriers to employment. Um, so we provide training and, and employment assistance. So there could be resources to provide funding for prescription glasses, tools, uniforms, transportation, utility, and rental assistance. Um, and there's also the availability to receive childcare assistance, which we know can be a barrier for some people to be able to go to work. And so at the one stop here, what we do is we align a participant that may have those barriers with those services and then uh, also get them connected to an employer. Uh, the next thing that we do is we have occupational skills training. So we have a provider list which has more than 300 programs. And essentially what that does is it increases the skill of the local workforce. And going back to my previous statement, we really try to place the job seekers with the program that's gonna work best for them and keep them in a sustainable uh, skilled job. And then our career services are available for adult dislocated workers and youth. And Dislocated workers, they're defined as a worker who has been laid off or terminated at no fault of their own. And like I've said, we haven't really seen the layoffs, but that's, uh, we, I thought we would mention that because that is something that, uh, that's a, a worker that we do work with here at the One Stop. So the training elements that we offer here, um, there, there's, they're very, they're very good elements because they touch a number of our, of our em, employee base um, when it comes to the workforce. So one of the elements that we do is occupational skills training. And this is the WIOA adult eligible participant element. And essentially what it is, is it's classroom training from one of our eligible provider, eligible training providers. And it's also known as the ETPL list. The next thing that we do is on the job training. So for WIOA eligible adults, um, they who earn an hourly wage, um, it, they can have up to 50% of their reimbursement to employers for their wages. And then hopefully the goal of that is to turn it into a permanent position, you know, once they've been successful meeting uh, the criteria with their employer. And then the next one is a, is a transitional job. And it's probably good to think about this as an internship. So under uh, the WIOA eligible adult participant plan, um, they, don't have, they can have little to no work experience and then their wages are 100% paid through WIOA funds. And then the business is not required to hire after, after this term that they've worked. 
um, hopefully they do have a job, but it's not a requirement of the, of the business. But it does allow for skill building for uh, a job seeker. And then the last one is an incumbent worker training. And so there may be current workers who need to update their skills or, or who have a specific credential that they need in order to maintain or keep their employment. And so we also offer um, resources for incumbent worker training. So one of the other areas that's become really important for, I think our partners, our community partners are recognizing it, and we certainly recognize it, we've recognized it here, is our youth employment opportunities. Um, so we have training and education services offered through an area that is actually our youth employment one-stop center. And that area provides education and employability services to Pima County youth and young adults ages 16 to 24. Through that network of local businesses and interagency collaborations, um, we serve a pathway for young people to succeed in the workforce. And some of the, the, the uh, interagency collaborations we work with, we work with Job Corps. We have Pima Vocational High Schools that we work with, with the students there so we can place them um, once they've graduated from high school. And our mission is to equip Pima County youth to gain employment, achieve self-sufficiency, and reach career potential through education, training, and work experience. One of the ways that we've been able to do that is uh, through a program that was created a while back through the Pima County One Stop. It was known as SAMP, uh, Southern Arizona Manufacturing Partnership. And what it is, is there's groups of kids that are in the Sunnyside School District and the Tucson Unified School District that go through a manufacturing program. It's, it's curriculum in the high school. And then once they are able to graduate, they're given an internship at manufacturing companies here in Tucson. And it's a wonderful uh, internship. And hopefully in most times, a lot of these, these youth, they stay on with these manufacturing companies and they, they make a very good wage. So it's, it's a program we're proud of. And it just goes to show that our youth, if we catch them early enough, uh, we can actually help them set a course for a career that hopefully they'll stay in for quite some time and stay local in Tucson and, and greater Pima County. So we look at a collaborative approach. Community and workforce development includes housing and community resources in addition to workforce and business specific programs. So just some of the things that we do here collectively, um, not just trying to find a person a job, um, connecting the employer and the job seeker, but we also have the Keno Veterans Center, which we navigate veterans and eligible spouses to explore services that include occupational skills training, career counseling, support services for personal, family, and emergency needs. And as I mentioned on that very first slide, you saw the Keno Service Center with our vet center that that's resides, that's aligned uh, to us in the building. Uh, we have a whole host of individuals that do nothing but help our veterans uh, who may be, uh, there could be homeless veterans, there could be veterans that are leaving the service. And so we're here to provide a full range of service for that working sector. Um, the other thing that we offer is emergency eviction legal services. So we provide system navigation, um, which includes urgent rental assistance and legal representation during an eviction proceeding. Once again, that's a time sensitive uh, issue for individuals who may be working. And when a, when a barrier or something like this happens in their, in their world, it could prevent them from you know, being able to go to work, being able to stay in work. And so we try to help uh, provide resources for those barriers so they can get to work and keep their job. Pima County Early Education Program scholarships are offered to eligible families for three to five-year-olds for preschool learning. So that program is also known as PEEPS. Um, and then we also have the Community Assistance Division, which that assists households with rent, utility, and other services. Um, so once again, it, it's trying to be a collaborative approach to keep people in jobs, to help them with the barriers so that they don't have to worry about those things and then maybe have to give up their job because they don't have certain resources um, available. And then we also have the Community Development Block Grant, which provides financial assistance to Pima County organizations that align with the local HUD consolidated plan. 
And so um, there's not a that that there's a lot of information involved with that, but that's something that we do offer uh, with financial assistance uh, to those areas. And then we also have the Sullivan Jackson Employment Center, which connects homeless individuals with housing and employment resources. Because once again, we find that if we can connect people with resources, whether it's their barriers, and then also with the job seeker or with the employer, we find that we have a better success rate for employment and keeping individuals employed. So to contact us, um, you can contact Rhonda, our program manager at Business Services. There's her email address and phone number. And myself, Dominica Dominguez, program coordinator, business services, my email and phone number, um, as well as our uh, main business services uh, email address and our website, Pima Works at Gov. I mean, I'm sorry, PimaWorks.gov. There's a lot of information for employers and those that are seeking uh, services from the one stop. Uh, the main number for Penal Service Center is the 724-7700 number. Um, myself as a program coordinator, um, I am the supervisor, I'm a supervisor role for the outreach team. Um, so the outreach, what they do is go out to the community and connect with local businesses and share information of our services. I'd like to thank City of Tucson for inviting us to present and share our services um, this afternoon. Fantastic. Thank you both. I appreciate that. Um, you can see there is a wealth of support through your office. And I think that's the message we wanted small businesses to hear is that they don't have to go it alone when it comes time for um, finding talent or you know, when they're having those hiring challenges or they need to fill a specific position. Um, it is certainly um, helpful to, I guess, have uh, people on our side, right? To help solve those problems. So I really appreciate that. And I think to illustrate that, um, and I want to see um, if she is still available, if, if, um, if Keisha is still on, and I'm not sure I'm hearing her yet, but maybe Dominica, you can. Can you, guys, can you guys oh, hear yes, me now? Yes, yes. Okay. okay. I see you on Rhonda's um, name, but that's okay. We, we, we got you identified, so, uh, so that's perfect. I would be curious to hear your perspective. So as a company, um, having to deal with some of the things that, um, that we're just talking about, hiring up, filling positions, you know, what, maybe share a little bit about your recent experience working with Pima County One Stop and the team. What was that like? What drew you to them in the first place and how, and how did it go? I, did I hear? Can I hear you, Keisha? No, I've lost. Can you hear you. me? Oh, yes. Can you hear I me? Got you. Yes. Okay. So one of the things that's really cool um, that I wasn't planning on talking to, um, but it's the SAMP program. Um, so years ago, when I was at Sergeant, um, this whole program started because we were having such a terrible time finding machinists and trades and so forth, um, and. I believe at that time it was Jerry Brunson who um, they partnered up um, Pima County and um, the president of our company at that time was Scott Still. And he was just, you know, it was just this, a terrible time finding trades, um, tr those, those individuals in the trades. And so it really kicked off this stamp program. And I have to tell you that we, um, it's just been incredibly successful. Um, and I just have to say what a positive, what a positive um, outcome that's been for uh, manufacturing and for Sargent. Um, we've had some fallout like over the last couple of years, of course, there's COVID. Um, and then I think there was a changeover with Jerry and then there's some, there's an, um, a little bit of change in the platform um, and the, the personnel who's been working the program, but it seems to be ramping up again. Um, and we have had, um, every year we get SAMP students in, um, and they come in and they work in our facility and they oftentimes are a part of the engineering school, um, at the U of A and, um, they work in our, they work in our manufacturing, um, 
environment and with our machinist and um, if anyone, if, when you're hiring, when you're hiring an engineer, if you, if they start as a machinist, it's an incredible, um, I would say, level up because, you know, when you're designing parts, you think you're designing it, but then when you really have to make it, like the machinist, you know, there's a big disconnect. So when you have somebody who's actually making the parts and who's are making the parts, and then they go into designing it, it's such a, it's such an advantage and it's such a skill set that we find so valuable. So this program, I just want to say, one, is um, huge, and I really hope that we can continue to elevate it and, and to get back um, to, to the platform that it was. I mean, it's still very good, and I know that Kathy has made, a, uh, I think, a, um, a huge commitment to it. So um, anyways, it's just, uh, it's been a wonderful, a wonderful program. Um, again, we look for the kids, um, we go through the um, um, interview process, and then we have them come in. Um, so it's just been really great. So I can't say enough about that platform um, for, for Sargent. Um, it's something that we really look forward to, and it's just a really way to build talent within our organization, not just from um, machining and so forth, but it's that growth potential all the way through um, to the engineering field. And so I, that's I one. That's awesome. Yes. And, and because it speaks to you as well, you know, opening the eyes, right, to, to our young uh, folks, to the positions that are right here at home in their community, this opportunity that there are jobs here that they can stay for. So I think that's awesome. And I applaud your willingness to, to be part of that. That's amazing. Yes. So the guys here, the supervisors and the leaders and the manufacturing and operations are just huge fans. And they've really even taken on, it hasn't even been an HR initiative. It just has grown to be so much of what, what's a part of our platform. And, and we look forward to that every year. So um, you know, it's getting harder and harder. And so, you know, it's just really going back and pushing the trades that not, it's not always an, you know, the option of going to college, but it's that opportunity, um, other opportunities that can, you can grow into a college, um, into a college, uh, you know, enrollment and go through the U of A, but it's that whole um, ability to just come in and it's just different options for, for those different students um, that want a different career path. So, and I think um, it adds right to their self-esteem. I think it builds their self-esteem, right? It makes them more confident yeah. when they enter that next yeah. um, academic path, right? So yeah, and we go through, yeah, and we go through the process with them, and we we've helped them with with schedules and um, making things work, and we've actually done tuition reimbursement for those kids who want to go into engineering. Now, by any means, lots of those students are really just into the engineering, and they want to go into programming. I mean, so it's a whole different ballgame. I mean, so like when you're when you're in just doing a machinist and if you don't want to go into the engineering facet, you can go into a machinist and grow to the next level um, and grow into programming. And you don't necessarily have to have a degree if you grow through that through through the trade itself. And, you know, those those um, those our programmers right now are, are making, um, you know, uh, you know, one hundred thousand dollars. Um, it's just something that's a very well sought after. So this is a huge, this is very impactful for us. So um, I can't say enough about it. And, and you know, really um, any way that we can put in, and we would participate in any efforts that we can do to get back out to there to the schools um, and to ramp this up even more so is something I can't say enough about. Um, I do know what was another very cool thing. So those two schools um, that you spoke of um, from the trade perspective, um, we also, one of the things that we attend a lot of career fairs and so forth and at the U of A and um, just right here, um, but this is one of the first times this year um, that one of the school districts in Marana had actually contacted us and they, um, from a high school perspective, and so um, we went to the high school and let me tell you, was that ever cool? Because they wanted to see all of our direct labor. So maybe those individuals who want to go into shipping and receiving and then into logistics and buying and just be a buyer, or, you know, there's just tons of opportunities or a manager and so forth that they can go through the process or, you know, or different positions, maybe it's production control from an operations or a planner position. So um it was super exciting um, too. We went there and, and they just loved us, you know, <laughs> and so, um, and maybe that's just you doing a manufacturing tech. So that was just another really, you know, any way that, um, that we can engage the high schools, like in, in these programs is a tremendous opportunity for us. Yeah. So, I think it's great when they that. see, yeah, when they see all the cool things that are going on in your facilities, I think that's really what opens their eyes, inspires them, and, and they want to learn more. They want to understand that. And when they find themselves able to pursue a track like that, how, how awesome is that? Yeah. So. 
Yes. Awesome. Yes, it really it really is. So so that's been that was super Great. cool from that perspective. And then on secondary, um, we participated in the um, H1B1 um, workforce program um, for two of our classes. I believe this was back in October. So you guys will have to forgive me because I don't. Yes. I don't. It was. Uh, it seemed like so long ago, and it, and it really wasn't. But this was a tremendous opportunity again for us, um, because we uh, we another area that again in trades and perspective is our inspectors, our quality inspectors. So machinists are very very difficult to find, but what even more so harder than that is quality inspectors. Um, mm -hmm. I can't even begin to tell you um, the struggle that we that we face. It's just even more so of a niche. Um, that's hard to, that really is hard to find. And it's so crucial to us being in the aerospace industry as far as quality and checking um, and really um, all of our compliance that goes along with that, with our with our contracts with the Department of Defense and the Navy and, 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 and the aerospace companies that we serve. So with that being said, um, having a terrible time finding that. And so there's a couple classes and there's a couple things that we really need to have people to, to um, participate in. And one of them is called GD&T training, and um, that's um, geom geometric dim dimensioning and tolerancing um, training. I know it does not sound just awesome. <laughs> so I can't wait to jump into that class, right? <laughs> so, um, but it's very technical. Our engineers, um, is very crucial to our engineers, and it's very crucial to um, our engineer and our test engineers and our, and our, test, our test techs. So um, we just had a really hard time. Um, it's, it's a position that, um, so the quality positions at Sargent have been, have been, that have been open and that we've been struggling to find, most all of them and the quality engineers and the regular engineers, um, really this, this training is something um, and having this skill and the ways that we can develop it is crucial to the organization and to many, and to many uh, manufacturing organizations. So to make a long story short, we were able to get in um, with the help of this grant um, and th them resourcing it. Um, we were able to double our numbers into that. So that really gives the you know individuals um, the skill set to have it across the organization because it's so hard to get the training. And then it really helps from the ability once they have that um, the level two positions. You know you really have to have the have the training and have the skill. So that was incredible just to be able to grow our skill set and organizationally be able to have that to help us better service our customer. So that was a phenomenal a phenomenal class. And then um, from a little bit more from a um, an administrative and salary perspective and a, and a leadership perspective, they also helped um, the H1B grant that we participated in. Um, again, like over 20 people that we weren't we would never have been able to manage um, is uh, it's called Apex Advanced Pop Product Quality Planning, um, and it's AS9145. It's an aerospace standard, as is the GD&T training. So um, that we were able to um, participate, get all of our team members um, in there, and um, this skill is really focuses on from an from an organizational perspective of, of putting a lot of work up front in the planning phases for us. Because let me tell you, besides having the GD tree training um, and that technical side. We, we are not real good at planning, <laughs> making it effective in the rollout. So um, this just really moved the organization forward by having this training um, in a highly competitive market. Um, you know, the expectations are high in our market right now for delivering um, products on time and high quality standards, and most importantly, ensuring that they're safe. So this really gave us the ability to put this work and have a, a, have a planning platform um, and just a baseline foundation for our, for our um, salary team members. Um, to put the planning effort in front uh, instead of the back end so that we were much more efficient. Um, so it was, uh, it was again, um, tremendous opportunity, both of those, both of those um, that grant, the H1B1, um, and helping us um, be able to provide this training um, and, you know, That's great. you know, raising the skill level of our employees and um, from an organizational perspective, um, just putting us on in a place for, for our customers. That's great. Now, I'm thinking about Rhonda and Dominica, as you hear, Tisha, talk about those experiences and successes. You know, what would you say to, to businesses listening that, you know, haven't used your services before? You know, how do you kind of allay their fears if they have any about kind of working with a system uh, and services like yours? I mean, what do you say? What do you say to that? And, and how do you build on what Kisha has said? So, and first of all, thanks, Kisha, 
for uh, providing that information. I would say one of the things that makes it unique is relationships. It's relationship building. It's not transactional. So we have, as, as you know, you, you heard Kisha, there's was more than one service used. And I believe they might be doing a recruiting event too. So there's a trifecta maybe. Oh my gosh, um, yes. I forgot to mention that. I <laughs> so <laughs> my excited because we haven't partaked yet. And so yes, um, Ashley Hames, um, um, she manages our talent acquisition process, um, and she's participating in that. So I can't say enough about that. We're excited for that for that to be a part to be a part of that. So I, I so I'm going to uh, touch on it's it's relationship. Um, so we build relationships with the companies, which in turn helps the job seeker. Um, and I'm going to go one step further to say um, while. Sargent is in aerospace. As I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, industries. We have targeted industries through our Workforce Investment Board, but we also have other industries. So what I would say to these, these individuals on the call today is these programs are based on eligibility. And so it covers a very diverse uh, funding source and also eligibility for many different job seekers, many different employers. And so don't be afraid to call the one stop and we can get you set up. When you call and talk to a business services person, we have the process so we can start putting a employer and job seeker in the right direction. So as I mentioned, it's about sustainability and getting people in, in higher wage uh, positions. So that would be my take is it's not one size fits all and it's relationship based to manage the employer relationship and the job seeker. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you all. I'm going to keep us rolling. So stay with us because we may have some questions at the end. But now I'd like to introduce Michael Guyman, another native Tucsonan with a 25 year career centered on political strategy, business development and advocacy and organizational management. As president and CEO for the Tucson Metro Chamber, Michael is responsible for developing and implementing the goals and vision for the chamber and to fulfill on its mission to champion an environment where business thrives and the community prospers. Prior, Michael was Vice President of Regional Partnerships for Sun Corridor, Inc., Executive Director of Metropolitan Pima Alliance, Chief of Staff to Tucson City Council Member Fred Ronstadt, Assistant Vice President for Governmental Affairs for the Tucson Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce, and Political Consultant to the Bridges, a 360-acre mixed-use infill development home to Tech Parks, Arizona, GEICO's regional headquarters as well. Michael holds a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of Arizona, and I have to say something you might not know. Michael's passion is baseball, and apparently he was named the official scorer for the Tucson Padres AAA Baseball Club from 2011 to 13. So, so Michael, I want to know if you actually um, score, you scored or you score keeped or, you know, how does all that work? What was your official duty there? Yeah, you know, can we turn this into a baseball conversation? That'd be great. <laughs> Somehow. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was the official scorer, so it was my job to rule if it was a hit or an error. It was my job to rule if it was a pass ball or a wild pitch. Um, all of that then relates to the statistics, whether or not the pitcher gets an earned run or the batter gets a hit, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, Which, my job was important. But, but the, the conversations that I had with the managers after the game were even more fun. More fun, but all that statistical uh, knowledge you brought to bear in your current role and with all, I know our, our work on the workforce board together, which you are a key piece of, really informs the work that Rhonda was just talking about in her presentation. And so I wanna turn it over to you, let you share uh, how the Tucson Metro Chamber um, can assist in this way. Yeah, thank you so much, Barbara. And I just wanna start by saying uh, thank you very much for your partnership. Uh, how great is this call? We have the city, we have the county, we have an employer, uh, we have a business organization. I mean, we're all coming together to help solve these problems. And we do this collaboratively. And it's, it's, it's extremely important for all of us to be pulling on the same rope. And I think that we are doing that. Uh, so, you know, there, there were a lot of things that were touched on. There was on, on the job training. Um, there were organizations like SAMP that focus on specific skills. Uh, what we at the chamber are doing, so we adopted a workforce blueprint that uh, you, Barbara, were a part of our steering committee. Uh, we also had uh, a couple of members of the, uh, the county's uh, economic development department as a part of that steering committee to help develop those recommendations. 
And I just kind of want to focus on a couple of them that are relative to this conversation. One is uh, is uh, it's related to kind of on the job training, but it's more work based learning programs. So internships, externships, uh, job shadowing. What we are trying to do is encourage more employers to provide internships, to provide externships to, uh, for teachers, uh, to provide uh, job shadowing for high school students. Uh, the more we get uh, employers involved in this, uh, the better on the uh, sort of on the job or real world training um, our students will receive. And we, we know that there are many employers who have turned those internships into full-time employment uh, because it's a great way to, to find what talent exists. And again, a lot of these students are going to these internship programs because they are passionate about that work. They really want to do those types of jobs. And I, I love the, the comment that Kisha made earlier that's related to, to this as well. And that's that not all students um, are going to go down the college track. Uh, what we're seeing uh, through Pima Community College, uh, through a lot of trade schools, uh, are positions um, and, and career pathways where you can you know, get a certificate, you can get an associate's degree, uh, you can get a two-year degree that will lead to a fulfilling and full career. Uh, and so we're really trying to base uh, these experiences um, that students are having uh, base them on the passions that they have, the things that they really want to do, uh, knowing that, that college is not for everyone, knowing that associate's degree is not for everyone. Um, it's really trying to make sure that these students are, are going down the right path, and it's a path that they want to go down. Uh, and so uh, a program that we are ultimately going to be calling uh, the Tucson Employer Development Program that we're working jointly with the city and the county on are, is, a, is awarding and at the very least, recognizing companies that serve as best practices for internships and other work-based learning programs. Um, so we're gonna be rolling this program out over the, the course of the year. Uh, we're very excited about that partnership and we're excited to bring these best practices to bear so that companies can follow suit. Uh, the other, the other uh, element that I wanna talk about um, is uh, our work with the Center for the Future of Arizona, uh, which is a statewide organization that is working, one of the programs that they're working on is career literacy. So I talked a little bit earlier about career pathways, demonstrating, you know, child or a student, whether it's middle school, high school, they want to become, and I'll just use Kish's example of a welder, these career pathways lay out the exact pathway that these uh, students will go down uh, to that associate's degree, to that certificate, to that uh, bachelor's degree, to that master's degree, um, in all these different positions so that they as middle schoolers and high schoolers have a better understanding of, um, of what that pathway looks like. Uh, the, the way that uh, which we're doing that is uh, uh, doing a pilot program right now in the Sunnyside School District, partnering with uh, Superintendent Steve Holmes and uh, going and, and getting employers into the classroom uh, so that uh, the students uh, in that particular school district uh, will see and listen to and hear from the employers that are probably right down the street from where they live. And so it's demonstrating to those students what type of opportunities exist right in their own backyard. But it's also showing uh, the different types of career. Um, and, you know, Kisha talked about the, the work that they do uh, in the schools in their area. Uh, we want to expand that citywide, but we're starting at the uh, within the uh, Sunnyside School District and trying to uh, to try, like I said, get those uh, employers into the classroom. But you know, another aspect of this conversation, Barbara, too, it's uh, you know, it's getting the, the students to understand what those careers look like. It's getting uh, more employers to provide internships, uh, but to retain uh, employer or sorry employees. Uh, one of the conversations that we're really trying to, to move forward with as well is um, creating the right kind of culture within your company. Uh, you know, I, I'm starting to see statistics, and, and we actually uh, wrote an article uh, that appeared in uh, November's edition in Inside Tucson Business talking about culture and how important it is for employers. 
Um, some of the some of the stats uh, that we found: uh, twenty four percent of employees are more likely to quit if they don't like the employee organization's culture. Um, 60% of employees would accept a job they love that pays half their current salary over a job they hate that pays double their current salary. 91% um, of managers say a job candidate alignment with co company culture is equal to or, or more important than skills and experience. So these are all things that, um, uh, that uh, you know, companies are paying a lot more attention to. I mean, you hear about um, the great resignation and part of that is employees uh, really wanting to find um, that better fit. It's obviously more than that, but a, a big component of that is, is employees that, you know, through the pandemic just kind of realize, you know what, I want to do something that I'm more passionate about um, and, and um, those opportunities and, and finding those opportunities that will be more filling, fulfilling to them personally. So company culture is also becoming a big, a big part of this. But uh, I just wanted to, to also mention uh, as chair of the, uh, the planning committee for the Workforce Investment Board, obviously, uh, as you mentioned, Barbara, you are a part of that. Uh, we are the 45 uh, or so member board uh, that acts as the governing board for the uh, uh, Pima County One Stop. Uh, so we obviously work very, very closely with them on, on a variety of things. But the planning committee is really trying to get the word out about the services that One Stop provides because we want more employers to know how great this diamond in the rough truly is. Um, it is there for our employers to succeed. And I'm really glad that we're having this conversation and we really want to take this more on the road so more employers understand the services that Pima County One Stop provides. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. And I absolutely agree. You know, you can't do economic development assisting businesses with growing and expanding and locating in your community if you can't point them to the resources to help them be successful and really to find the right people, right? It, it really is when, when they're looking to make decisions, employers need to know that the workforce is there and they need some help finding it, right? Because it's not always gonna be easy. And, and so I'm just so appreciative of the partnership as well. So again, having Pima County, having the Tucson Metro Chamber uh, at the table with us as we work together to solve some of these, uh, I don't know, maybe challenges, not really turning them into opportunities is what we'll call that. Uh, because I think we have it going on here in Tucson. I think this is uh, the place you heard from Kisha. She's had some successes. And, and so my hope is that people will just jump in and utilize these services, these resources. They're at the ready. Um, and there's no reason not to, not to have that uh, help you out. So uh, so that's exciting. And maybe um, I, I, to your point, Michael, about uh, the programs coming out of the workforce blueprint, I'm very excited about that as well. And I do think helping recognize our employers for doing some of the great things they're doing is a way to share that story with other employers and other small business owners who are looking for ways to emulate that, to have some success in retention of talent, to have some success um, in uh, really training up their own employees so that they can keep them, promote them, and have them serve their organizations for a long time to come. I think that's the sweet spot. That's the good um, sauce, if you will, on how we um, and how we build up a good ecosystem here in Tucson. So fantastic. Um, maybe what I'll ask you, Michael, is to share, because this is also something I, I think that, that you know, might get lost on some who aren't necessarily connected in a chamber or a business organization. Just quickly, you know, talk about what are the key benefits of being connected to a community of businesses like that of a chamber? How does that help ensure their resiliency or their growth? What would you say to that? So, uh, you know, I would say that being a part of a chamber or any other organization, uh, whether it's chamber or a leadership organization or you know trade association, um, you build those networks. And especially with the chamber, with as diverse of a membership as we have, um, if you attend our events, uh, if you are a part of um, some of our sector partnerships, you're working with other businesses and learning about other businesses that you could potentially do business with. Uh, and so, so, that to me is, is, a, is a big component of being a part of an organization like a chamber is building those relationships. You talked earlier about the importance of relationships. 
Uh, and that's what a chamber is all about. It's building those relationships within the business community. Obviously, we solve problems. Obviously, we work uh, from an advocacy perspective. We are the voice of business. And so from an advocacy, advocacy perspective, we do take positions on issues um, that ultimately, uh, in our, our hope, to benefit uh, the business community and help grow the business community. But we're also help, here to help businesses grow and succeed. And, and one of the main ways that we do that is providing the right kind of connections uh, within our events, within our sector partnerships, within our committees, uh, and, and also with our partnerships with, with other chambers and other organizations. And so, you know, we're all here working together to, uh, to build a business community. And I think that's the key, right? The business owners, they don't have to go it alone, right? So if you're, you know, if you're sitting there in your chair or if you're standing and watching this um, or if you're listening on your phone, right? You're not doing this on your own, right? You have these partners, you have fellow business owners and leaders in the community and resource partners to help you solve for whatever it is you're faced with. So let's talk about that real quick as we come to the close of our hour. Just for all of our panelists, what are the challenges that we should be thinking about? What are we about to be facing or what seem to be the, the more difficult um, you know, pieces of the puzzle right now as it relates to workforce development? What would you say to that? Who would like to, you want to tackle that, Rhonda? So I, Michael and I actually had this conversation and maybe even you and I did, Barbara. Uh, one of the, the issues that I see and our group sees is where we centralize this information. Um, I think businesses don't know where to go a lot of times. They hear things, you know, whether they, it, it's, the information is out there. And I think as community partners, um, I think for us, and, and you mentioned it earlier, and Michael mentioned it, for us to get together and to have a very siloed messaging, right, to businesses, and I don't mean silo, it's very, you know, small, but I mean a silo of having us work together to get that information out. And I'll give you an example. So the chamber, we had meetings with them to see how we could help their employers. And, and I will be the first to say that businesses are busy doing their business. They don't have a lot of time to go out and you know, talk to people and to get the information. And so the chamber is an excellent way to find a very cohesive just group of information. They don't have to go to different places. So it's centralized. He went ahead and had our link put on there so that we can help businesses who have employees that are struggling. So they right there put a link and it goes straight to our website, which they're advocating for their employers and their you know, membership is getting value with that. So in my opinion, I think we need to get the messaging out to businesses that uh, the resources are there. And so we know the workforce issues are there, you know, finding the jobs, finding the, you know, matching the employers. But I think it's also the messaging with helping with the resources in total. Thank you. Absolutely. And Kisha, I wonder, or I know Michael may have something too, but I was thinking, you know, what are the challenges right now with workforce? Unemployment's low again kind of a strange period of years we've gone, we've just gone through. Um, what are there positions that are still hard to fill right now? And, you know, and maybe Kisha can speak to that piece, but Michael, maybe you can speak to the small businesses of, in other industry sectors, retail and service industries. Um, you know, how does that, what's that outlook look like? You want to take, take that, Michael? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, and I think uh, some others attended the future workforce event last week at the University of Arizona and the, the stat that just keeps sticking in my mind. And I, I don't mean to like use this to, to bring this conversation down, but for, um, uh, for every 10 open positions in the state of Arizona, there are six unemployed individuals to, to fill them. That is a, I mean, just from a sheer numbers perspective, that is a major issue. Um, and so part of it is skills, making sure that we have, you know, we're, we're developing the right kind of skills, which, you know, obviously a lot of our post-secondary education partners are, are doing every day working with industry. 
but but it's also a sheer numbers game. Not only is it from an unemployment perspective, where you know ten open positions for every six unemployed individuals, uh, the stats that I also hear uh, out of the uh, PB Community College relate to what they're calling this birth dearth, uh, which which means that the sixteen to twenty four year old generation is fewer in numbers than the than the generation after it, uh, and so. Um, or I guess before it, uh, the 24 plus. So, so just from a numbers perspective, as we look at the future pipeline, um, that is going to be a, a, a significant issue. So that that then relates to, you know, how how are companies and businesses are very adept at figuring out how to solve these problems, um, because that's part of what a business is: it's solving a need or a want. Uh, and so, so part of the the future pipeline issue is going to be businesses solving how to make their processes more efficient, how to do the di their processes very differently, because just from a numbers perspective, they might not be able to have access to uh, the, the, the number of, of skilled indi individuals within a workforce. But then it also relates to our ability as a community to attract uh, people from outside of our region to fill these positions. And that, that's another conversation I know that is, that is happening as well. Absolutely. Well, this has been a great conversation. So I do want to just thank everyone. I see, Tisha, do you have a comment on that, on the final sort of you discussion know, I, around challenges? Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can say is there's really not a piece of, of um, talent acquisition and, and recruiting and retention that um, I never imagined that uh, there's not a gap, that there's not, <laughs> it's just not a struggle. Um, so... I just have to reiterate, you know, everything that, that, that Michael said, and, you know, it's just, uh, you know, now it's just the point that there's been so much turnover, even trying to find somebody like it's, you know, the whole world at 22% turnover. So everyone that's out there has just gotten a new job too. So it's just, uh, it's just one battle after um, another. And so uh, I, you know, we just have to be resilient and, and, and find out and, fi and, and figure it out, you know, and it's just almost, uh, it's kind of uncharted territories in so many, in so many ways. So, so, um, so quick question for you then, what does Sergeant Aerospace do that's unique and different that you think does help contribute to its company culture and attracts and retains its people? What do you do? So right now, um, our, we have a GDP, a GDP process. It's called Goal Deployment Process. Um, and so we take our top priorities um, and put them on the table. And um, this is our GDP priority number four, not that it's ranked in any such order. But right now, our organization is just really, you know, having that strong culture um, making sure there's just, you know, a, a huge commitment. People want, you know, they want, when they're coming, they want to know more things. They don't want a boss. They want a coach. They don't want a job. They want to, they want to know they have career advancement. Um, I mean, you know, it's just, uh, you know, the pay perspective and, and, and um, I mean, with engineers and so forth, I mean, the increases um, in, in, the, in the wage inflation is just amazing. Um, and so it's just, uh, it's just doing everything that we can do to be engaged with our workforce um, in, in very, very much. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing at this juncture that we really just have to do is just be engaged. And that's going to take care of, you know, wearing their, knowing if they're, if they're, if they're, we're going to retain them, if they're, if they're happy, um, how they feel about their pay, you know, what, you know, that they're aligned with our goals and objectives and our culture and our mission. So we're really revamping on our whole, um, uh, our whole culture and, you know, making sure we're providing flexibility, making sure, you know, that we, have the that have, people have good work-life balance that's so important coming out of the whole remote workforce world so there's just so much um, that I can honestly say it's just being about engaged with your workforce and creating those platforms and those spaces for for um, for us all to be uh, able to awesome. communicate effectively and um, being and, and really making sure that we're, we're hearing our teams and our in that's our, in awesome. our workforce. So there you have it. If you stayed to the end, you got the million dollar advice here from the employer of choice in our region. So that's awesome. Thank you, Kisha. Thanks everyone. It has been a fantastic conversation and it is about creating pathways for our people, right? Let them help them realize their, their dreams, their goals, uh, because then it's not only professional, but it's personal as well. And you'll have loyal workers, right? To the end. So that's awesome. 
So again, hats off to everyone on the panel today. It's time to wrap up our time, but we'll be back next month on Tuesday, May 24th at 3 p.m. Be sure to watch your inbox for the announcement and registration link. We'll keep you connecting for success. And don't forget, you can call our City of Tucson Economic Initiatives Small Business Assistance Line at 520-837-4100 and visit connecttucson.com for resources or to sign up for our email updates. So with that, have a great afternoon. Thank you, everyone.